Okay, let us uh, spend a few minutes in um, discussing a little bit uh, the possible implementation of the inverse kinematics for the full dimensional problem. So we are going to control the three dimensions uh, of the position and the orientation via uh, uh, feedback of uh, the quaternion error. Okay. Uh, the script that I'm going to show you is uh, the one uh, uh, numbered six. I already uploaded uh, the, 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 the script on, the, on Classroom. I'm going just to update this one because I made some uh, last minute changes. Okay, so let us select a possible uh, robot for our, uh, for our study. For example, the Yako uh, seven links, uh, Yako two with seven links. And uh, let us have a look of the have a look at the co initial configuration. This is a uh, uh, one possible initial configuration. Actually, I'm not very happy with the, this configuration because I do know that this is a singular configuration, okay? Because the robot is totally scratched. Even if I don't know, uh, I mean, we can easily verify it, but uh, okay, let us verify it uh, just a moment, just to be sure. Okay, this is my uh, Jacobian. Uh, okay, I have the row number three and five that are totally zero. So clearly, this is uh, uh, not a full rank Jacobian. I, if I ask the rank, the rank is three. It's not even uh, four. And uh, I may also verify that the condition number is clearly plus infinity. Obviously, plus infinity for uh, uh, a software of uh, numerical uh, computation uh, is not plus infinity, but something like uh, 10 power 31. Okay. Well, good. So let us change the initial configuration and uh, keep a non-singular initial configuration. I already have this one. Let me... I already know that this is not uh, singular, okay? Uh, my uh, my uh, script is uh, similar to the previous one, so let me only focus uh, on few on few aspects. The one that uh, I want to to stress the attention to focus your attention. Okay, first of all, we initialize uh, basically the DH table. Then we select uh, our algorithm, and depending on the algorithm, we have uh, different weights. The weights uh, are clusterized uh, in position orientation, and uh, it doesn't have uh, too much sense to have different weight for X and Y direction, for example, but uh, and for that reason, I have the same gains for X, Y, and Z, but it does have sense to have separate gains for the position and for the orientation, okay? Because there are different unit measurements. I initialize uh, uh, the simulation variables and uh, everything uh, as uh, we have done for in the other uh, lectures. The, the novelty is that I want to keep track of the condition number with the Jacobian. So I just define an empty variable uh, that uh, I will use for the scope. Okay, so desired trajectory. For this exercise, constant. In the project, uh, you, will, you will be required to use uh, a smooth trajectory, such as, for example, the trapezoidal velocity profile. Then, direct kinematics, uh, I extract uh, the position, I exit uh, the quaternion, I compute the Jacobian, I collect 
the condition number of the Jacobi in a variable for uh, post-processing evaluation, then inverse kinematics. Position error, basically the desired minus the current and the factor position that I just computed in line uh, 51. Quaternion error, I, I use a function that is one line function, quat error, this is the, my quaternion error. And then I build my vector of six by one element that collect the three positional and three orientational one. If uh, transpose else, I'm going to implement set inverse of the Jacobian, multiply the gain, multiply there. Okay, nice. Let us run it. and see the results. Uh, are you seeing the, the graph, right? The plot, only one now, okay. So this is, the initial, uh, this is the initial configuration. This is the final configuration. The position is the one that I gave to the, to the robot. The orientation, if you see, uh, is equal to the base frame. And this is what I wanted. Okay, so that's fine. Let us have a look at our, uh, our uh, um, variables. So top plot, joint position expressed in radians, then joint velocity expressed in radian seconds, position error and orientation error. Everything looks more or less fine. I can see that the position error is strongly related to the gains. This is the inverse of the Jacobian. The gains have the same uh, meaning of the eigenvalue of uh, a dynamic matrix, okay? So very nice. This is an exponential. This is the orientation. Uh, fine. Let me have a check also the condition number. The condition number, I know that uh, it is one for uh, a square matrix and plus infinity for a singular matrix. This is a, a very low condition number. It means that my robot during the movement exhibited a very nice configuration far from kinematic singularities. Okay, but let us complicate a little bit our analysis. And let us start from a singular configuration. And here I already, I already, I mean, saved a singular configuration that is basically the one that we saw a few minutes ago. So the robot totally scratched on the on the up direction. So let us see what is the behavior that I should expect in simulation for a, a singular. configuration. Okay, so MATLAB doesn't provide me any error. Here, it seems to be fine because this is the initial configuration and this is the final one. So, seems to be okay. However, if I have a look at the condition number first, I see that here, this is uh, 10 power 17. So my condition number is quite high. Plus infinity means uh, uh, singularity, but we do know that uh, uh, the zero of, of uh, MATLAB is uh, power mi uh, minus seven, 16. So this is a, a kind of a singular configuration. And the behavior that I should expect is uh, something like that. Let's first have a look at the joint velocities. Here is a 10 power 4. It means that I'm experiencing the very high velocity close to a kinematic singularity as we discussed in theory. 
The software is not blocking because uh, MATLAB always try to move on and to make the operation we ask it. In. But of course, this is something that does not have sense for a physical implementation, cannot be implemented, okay? And we can have a, a kind of discontinuity in the position, basically is a, a jump that is uh, physically inconsistent. This is a numerical simulation, so I can do it, but obviously is not uh, even close to the reality. And so on. I, how can I handle this? Well, I can implement the, the dumped list square. And this is just a function that I will give you, uh, I will upload on Classroom to be used. This is a, a pseudin version eventually dumped. What does it mean? If my problem is well balanced from the numerical aspect. This is a simple set inversion. For example, if the condition number of the Jacobian is small, this is a simple weighted set inversion. Otherwise, I use the dumped with the parameter that represents the dumping. Okay. Now, there are two thresholds based on heuristic and based on what I, I, I do prefer. In reality, uh, this is a little bit more complex, but this is only for the purpose of this course, okay? The threshold that I selected is this one, and uh, the dumping factor this one. Totally arbitrary, we'll not, we will not go into the details, but let us see the effect of this function. So in my main, now I'm running pinv dumped, this uh, small function, starting from a singular configuration. And let me verify what's going on. Initial and final configuration are the same. Nice. My, my condition number still is uh, singular at the beginning. Of, of course, I didn't change the initial configuration. But now we can appreciate a difference here. So the velocity now is much, uh, is much smaller, OK? Because I'm now, sorry, um, I'm now weighting also the velocity still is a quite uh, large value not yet physically implementable but this is the direction where i should head and if you can notice uh, i have some smaller discontinuity or steps in the position and in the of course so also in the air well, this is uh, doing its job and we can eventually play a little bit with the dumping factor, for example. This uh, power minus two, but if we want, just as a curiosity, let us see what happened if I increment the dumping factor. You can see that uh, now the trajectory is a little bit different. I'm, I meet the singular configuration in a different uh, instant time, but the configuration is the same. And uh, this is my peak in the joint velocity. Maybe here I could uh, add uh, a, a saturation to the velocity and see what happens. Saturation is a nonlinearity. We should pay attention. Let me repeat that for the class, for this course, it's okay. Don't pay too much attention on this. For uh, the, the, in the reality, if you are going to make uh, uh, the master thesis uh, in robotics or any experiment in robotics, we should uh, pay a little bit more attention on this one. But probably it's, uh, not probably, I will, 
in the lab we use a, a little bit more complex inversion that's the only difference i'm not going to to provide it to you because i don't want to make it uh, uh, too complex but this is the only thing that you should pay attention to okay so other thing that uh, may be used in order to to decrease uh, the um, the peak is to decrease the gain for example <coughs> because of course the gain multiply the error and uh, um, Okay, too small, we are not yet uh, at the end of it, or the, and I'm not uh, yet uh, at the final uh, configuration because I did not change the final time of the simulation. But we can appreciate that uh, now the velocities are very small and probably we, we are not uh, encountering, yes, so we, are, we do are encountering also the kinematic singularity because we, we start from the kinematic singularity. In your project, uh, however, uh, you are not going to use uh, a constant desired uh, position orientation. And this will help a lot the algorithm because the error will be small if you track the desired trajectory. Okay? So this is the interruption of your uh, practice lesson with uh, just a, a discussion about a possible implementation. I stop here the recording, but we stay here until you finish your your. Okay.